One thing to look for, and you, you did it here, where the nose crosses the plane of the cheek. They're turned away too far if the tip of the nose is over the edge of the cheek. <laughs> That's funny, it looks like a, a nose. Hello, thanks for tuning in to another one of my photo critiques. I'm doing a little bit differently today. I am recording, not live, and then I'll just be uploading the videos to the YouTubes after I'm done. Because I've live streamed the last few and the image quality just isn't where I wanted it to be. Uh, and I would rather have higher quality images for you to learn from than not. So here we are. I'm trying something new. You know what? If no one likes it as much as the old ones, we'll go back to doing it live. That's what being a business owner is all about. So who the heck am I? My name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer. Been doing it for 12 years, teaching for 10 of those. I'm also a certified PPA image competition judge. So I'm trained to do this. I've judged competitions all over the country, both live and in person, and I freaking love it because it's an opportunity for you to get constructive feedback. Yes, it's called a photo critique, but I feel like criticism often comes with a negative connotation, even though it's neutral by, by definition. But feedback, I feel, is constructive uh, in nature, at least it should be. So I love these critiques because you get to learn from other photographers uh, who've already submitted their work. And if you wanna submit your own, I'll tell you how to do that at the end and improve your craft. You get to learn from their mistakes so that you can not make the same ones. And if your images are in here, that's amazing. I appreciate you submitting your photos because one, you're gonna learn a ton from this, but also you're helping other photographers learn it too. So I got four images to critique today. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so image number one. Also, just in case you haven't seen me do one of these before, I like doing these in Photoshop because I get this handy dandy paintbrush tool and I can mark this up like John Madden watching a football game. Okay, the very first thing that we look at in the photography community um, is impact. This is the number one scoring criteria impact. Does the image jump out at you? Is it easy to see what's happening in the photo? So what I like to do is look through the image and just see what the main focus of the image is. And I can tell that it's right here. If you're like, well, obviously, Mike, it's a picture of a person with a background. But you will see what I'm talking about probably in some other ones. So if we flip this, there we go. This is one of the things that we do as judges. We flip an image upside down because then you lose the context and you're looking at brightness, sharpness, contrast, lines and shapes. So when I do this, still the brightest, jumpy outest part of the image, that is a word now, is right here where I'm marking up, which I can tell contextually is where it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's a great thing to do with your own images. Flip them upside down, and where do your eyes go first? Is it the most important part of the image? If not, you need to work on that. And our eyes go to the brightest, the sharpest, and the most contrast areas first. That's just how our brains read images. So the most important parts of your photos should be the brightest, the sharpest, and have the most contrast compared to the rest of the image. Okay, so let's talk about the pose. Her first expression, I think she's got a good natural look on her face. The eyes are a little off to the side. Generally, we don't wanna see all the white in the eyes here. I think this is about as far over as I would want her to look. I love the way she's short lit. I can draw better than that. Where the line of the shadows goes here down her face. That was positioned very well. I like the hair light we've got over here. That's cool. Some things that I'm not into though. We got back of her hand, looks huge. It's like a big claw coming over her other arm. And due to the, what looks like the wide angle distortion, this is probably shot on a 35 millimeter lens or maybe wider angle if it's a crop sensor. This hand looks so much bigger than the rest of her arm because of just the depth and distortion from the lens. This hand, beautiful and soft. This hand is soft. It's just the back is right toward the camera. We always wanna see the sides of the hand, never the open palm or the back, unless you're like ah, coming out at the camera. So, and this can be done by just bending the elbow a little bit and placing her hand right here. So instead of that, we get more of a side view of the arm. Also, where her hair is, we're totally losing the curve of her back. So we're getting a lot of foreshortening here. 
Foreshortening is where, you know, the arm looks long this way, but when I extend it toward the camera, it looks like a fist is coming out of my shoulder. You can't see the arm. And when we can't see the length of something, our brains process it to make it look like it's really short. Obviously we know she has a forearm and we know she has a torso, but there's something aesthetically off about it. And our brains don't necessarily recognize that, but the dissonance feels weird. So this makes her spine looks like it's this long. When in reality, we know it's more like that long compared to the rest of her. So to do this or to fix that, swing her lower half out just a little bit more, bring the legs out as well. I know we're trying to see some booty here, which is great, um, but we're losing all of the torso. And, and I love where the hair is. I love the hair light on there. I think that's great. Um, but also her shoulders are up. So we're losing her neck and we've lost the curve of her body. So lengthening her out this way will give us all of those curves back. Or crop in, you know, here. Let me just do that. Uh, let's keep it three to two. Same aspect ratio. You know, um, no, even go this way, which is still weird because of that hand. I don't want that hand there. Yoink. Yeah, still not loving it, but at least then we're not getting the foreshortening of the, of the body there. So yeah, that pose kind of wonky. I'd work on that. Uh, I like the the beams of light coming in over here. I think that's a cool touch. There's just also a lot going on in the background. I appreciate that it's out of focus, but we've got a lot of detail back here and a lot of detail back here. And that really distracts from the magic that's here. Even if, and let me switch my brush over to black here. I'm gonna add a new layer. I would do this as an adjustment brush oh, in Lightroom. And get in kind of close. You're like, that looks awful. But no, I really just want to go from that to darkening the background just a touch. And then get the light back on her. See, she jumps out from the background so much more now from that difference in light. So again, yeah, there's just a lot going on in the background there and it's pretty distracting from, from what we actually want to see there. So, um, but overall, yeah, love the expression. There's a lot of great things happening here. Just a few things to make her look longer and stand out more. All right, we back to my red one. We are. Okay, cool. Let's go to the next image. Okay, so first thing I see, all the highlights right in here. I can't white tell if it's blown out. Normally you've got um, your color picker, which you can check out in the histogram in Lightroom, which is where I would do this, but you can do it in Photoshop also. So what I would do is get your color picker and just start sampling things over here on the highlights of the skin. And you can see how close to white that really is. Some of these areas are really blown out. And if I were to add an adjustment layer in, and darken it down. We can see some of that detail come back. So it's not clipped, but that part of the photo is pretty bright. Maybe my screen's up too high. I've also got bright lights in my face here. Either way, I think her skin looks looks pretty overexposed. So yeah, again, first thing I see is right here, which is where we want to see, right? We wanna see our, our subject and whatever action we have going on there. This image feels really cramped, like the crop is right at the edge of the ears, it's right at the edge of her body here, uh, looks like through a knee right there and right underneath her stomach right here. She needs some more space around her to feel less like boxed in. Also, we got the same really, really busy background. There's just so much texture back there. It takes away from what we should be looking at here. A couple posing tips here. When you squeeze everything in, it smushes everything out and makes arms look bigger. So even in a pose like this, bring the arms away from the body just a little bit so that things aren't smushed out. I mean, my shirt's kind of kind of tight, but you can see my own arm when I push it out my arm gets bigger, right? Cool if I wanna look muscly, uh, but generally 
people don't want to look bigger than they are. So that's that's the thing here. Bring the arms out just a little bit. Otherwise, I mean, she's got a comfy looking expression on her face. I like the angle. The light's pretty good. It's just her her skin's a bit overexposed out there. So that's something to, to check out. But really just how tight it's cropped, busy distracting background and check your your levels there on that. So yeah, you can see in the histogram here, there's a lot clipped, which is interesting because that's, that's the shadows. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to my custom one. I like that. Yeah, check your histogram, make sure you're not clipped in the blacks or the whites. Give her some more space. All right, let's do the next image. Okay, again, first thing that I see, this window, not our subject. Um, and if we flip that around, same thing. Your eyes probably go right here and not on the subject. So that is the first thing. The way to get around that is to create a silhouette. So if you want blown out windows in the background, cool. Don't light your subject, move them in front of the window and do a pose that shows off their shape so that you can create that kind of silhouette. She is positioned, centered where she needs to be, like the crop lines through the face, the centers, like that is all good. But again, we are cropping through her hips right here, the widest point of her hips, and that is a no-no. You wanna crop through the narrow points, not through joints, so you can go through forehead, but don't go through eyeballs, through mouth, through neck. You wanna avoid all of those spaces. I know I should mark these, okay. The ones in red are the ones you want to avoid. Let me do that. And then here, now let's go blue. I assume this is blue. I'm colorblind, fun fact. You can go through forehead. I love doing the lips down shot, which is right between the nose and the lips. That's good. You can go through top of shoulder. You can go through narrowest part of the waist, but again, I wouldn't want to crop through the wrist, so I would move that arm to compensate for that. Uh, yeah, so red ones, don't crop there. Blue ones, you can crop there. Okay, um, comfy natural expression on her face. That looks good. I love the, the face turned down, the eyes closed. One thing to look for, and you, you did it here, where the nose crosses the plane of the cheek. They're turned away too far if the tip of the nose is over the edge of the cheek. <laughs> That's funny, it looks like a, a nose. Um, so you wanna keep the nose from crossing the plane of that cheek, so she's good. It's close but she's good because that's like an in-between three-quarter shot and a total profile. So I would even bring her chin back just a little bit more so we have more space right here between her nose and the edge of her cheek. Also, her shoulder is up and so we're losing neck. She's a little scrunched, so keep that shoulder down. Even when they're lifting up like that, they can bring shoulders back, not up. And we got hand kind of poking out over here. We got hand over here. She should be turned just a little bit more toward the camera or camera move just a little bit more. But again, close those blinds. There's also no directional light on her, which I don't know. It, I think it's really just from the blown out highlights in the windows. It's hard to tell where the focus is and it, it just loses the cinematic value. Um, and we got, you know, a lot of texture and stuff going on in the background. This thing is kind of in a weird place. I don't know if it can move. This looks like a hotel room. Yeah, so fix the crop lines. You don't want a blown out background. It takes away from your client. Um, and then relax things down so we're not all scrunched. But overall, I love the expression. She looks comfortable despite, I know none of the boudoir poses actually being comfortable. So well done there. Okay. So first thing I see is, well, here really because that's the the brightest point lots of contrast right there and if we flip this one upside down same eyes go to right there okay so can you guess what i'm going to say we've already talked about some of this in the other poses firstly foreshortening we've lost all of her torso here same thing with the legs they're just like little stubs poking out in the back we've lost all length of her leg and of her body also, her head is way down here. We've totally lost her neck. She is like torpedo heading toward the camera right now. We've lost all length in her body. I like the eye contact, the facial expression. I like the way the hair is brought over the light side of the face. I think that's groovy. 
Uh, the hands look soft. We are not just looking at the open back of the hand. They're turned away a little bit, so that was done well. The arms are kept away from the body, so they're not smushed in and made to look bigger. That was done very well. We've still got a really distracting background here. There's so much going on. Um, and then, you know, again, it's, it's the highlights on the skin. It looks a little blown out. This bright spot over here needs to get knocked down. So clean up the background, make it a little bit simpler. There's a way that you can add texture and add floral elements and depth to the images without having such a busy, distracting pattern. Keep it simple, uh, especially when they've got lacy underwear on. You don't want that fabric to clash with the patterns on the background. Also, this cord back here kind of bugs me. That should go away. Yeah, again, I like the expression. Good open mouth, like her face, hair, solid. Totally digging those. Um, just shifting the camera a little bit more over to the side. So instead of straight on like this, she's more diagonal across the frame. I think both of you are gonna like that a lot more. So, and then get her head up. Alrighty. So that is how I do my image critiques. Notice I'm not attacking the photographer. I'm not saying you are a terrible photographer. You should get a desk job. Because it's, I, it's never criticism about the photographer. It's always feedback on the photo and how do we get better? And uh, I believe I know who submitted these images and there has been so much improvement in the last year and I'm super proud of you for, for, what you've, for what you've accomplished and like how far you've come. So high five for that. Um, and yeah, just keep getting better, keep practicing, keep working on what you're doing and your clients are gonna continue to love their stuff and, and you're gonna make more money, everybody wins. So if you want to submit your own images to one of these critiques, just email me, mike at boudoirguild.com or join us in our Facebook group, the Boudoir Guild's Facebook group. And when I post that I'm going to be doing an image critique, I'll ask for, for volunteers and you can submit your photos over there. And I would be happy to give you all the constructive feedback that I can. I've got other critiques on this channel, so be sure to check those out. And if you're like Mike, how do I light and pose everybody so I can just learn this stuff right away and not have to take all this time to learn it? Head to boudoirguild.com. I have courses on lighting and posing and composition and everything you could possibly need to start making a ton of money with your camera. You are amazing. We'll see you inside.